Hi people, welcome to the fourth episode of my drum cover series in which I would like you to participate in my learning process and the insights that I draw from it, which is actually the whole idea of this channel. This time I played a song by Tigran Hamasyan, an Armenian jazz pianist with influences from folklore, prog rock and electro. His music is often very rhythmically oriented. This is how I would imagine it if Mishuga or Opeth were a jazz band. So very, very exciting music. The song comes from the album Mockroot and there the Swiss Artur Natek plays the drums, who is also a cool solo musician, includes a lot of electronics and who you should definitely check out. I stumbled upon his playthrough of this song on the Minol YouTube channel and thought to myself, this is exactly the music I want to play more of. So this piece is perfect for my project because, as you know, I test a different learning method in each episode. So far I tried learning only by ear, only by sheet music and only by self-written sheet music. And this time I wanted to learn the song only by watching. So the question was, can I learn the song by just watching Artur's performance over and over and playing along? I'll tell you in advance, the answer is no, but for different reasons that you probably think now. So here too I have gained very exciting insights, but more on that later. As in the other parts, we proceed very systematically, as in science. We describe the problem that needs to be solved, make a hypothesis, describe the method used and then discuss the results. So let's start with the song. The title Out of the Grid is very telling because it really feels like the song doesn't fit it into any grid. You can tell that there is a beat, but somehow you can't really hold on to it. It keeps eluding you. This is because the song keeps changing the time signature. For example, it very often alternates between 15 sixteenths and 17 sixteenths. You can add that up to two 4-4 four, four measures, but that's not how the song is played and felt. Rather, the song is based more on the respective phrases. So it's very rhythmic, but not very beat oriented, with a lot of changes and a lot of unison parts that have to be played very precisely. So a very demanding song that you have to get involved with first. I had now decided to learn the song visually because I always considered myself a very strong visual learner, could always draw a lot from acutely watching other drummers and even managed to really empathize with them. There is also the so-called ideomotor effect, according to which you can actually learn exactly the same movements by actively watching and empathizing, almost as if you actually performed them yourself and you can even transfer emotions and intentions through it. So I wanted to empathize with, with Arthur's role and understand the song better as a result. Now let's look at the numbers so that we can compare it with the other episodes. Due to the rhythm and sometimes also technically demanding passages, I would rate the difficulty at seven out of 10. The song is almost five minutes long and it took me a total of 37 hours of active work, watching, analyzing, practicing to learn it. I think that's pretty good for a song at this level because I started from scratch so I didn't even know the song at all when I started and the time during the recording until the version which I was really happy with is also included in this duration. The ratio is 1 to 482. So 482 times the length of the song until the final recording. So the ratio is worse than with my last drum cover by Ishan, but better than with my most difficult drum cover by the Hirsch effect. I counted about 1474 strokes in total. That's about five per second. And that meant I spent an average of one and a half minutes per note. My learning process can be roughly divided into five phases. The first was getting to know the song, watching it a few times, then just playing along and adjusting the setup, choosing the symbols, arranging and tuning the set for the song. In the next phase, I started practicing systematically. 
Anyone who has seen the previous parts of this series will know that I gained the very, very helpful realization that it makes sense to start at the end and work your way up to the beginning of the song so that you play the end more often than the beginning because it then becomes easier and easier. There's always something familiar in front of you and uh, you can thus better prevent mistakes and frustration. That's exactly what I did here and it worked very well, but I quickly became skeptical as to whether my chosen method could bring me to really internalize the song at all. So very soon I was using transcriptions of the song as a support. That also helped me a lot. Nonetheless, I felt a bit lost and kept asking myself, how should I ever be able to not just replay it, but really feel it, play it by heart and live up to the music? But that's pretty typical. You probably know that feeling too. So I put that aside and just continued to learn systematically in many small steps because I know from experience this will get me to that point where I really understand the song eventually. What also helped me was of course watching the video that I used as a reference but also a live recording over and over again and just let it act on me in order to internalize the song and the musical ideas in it. Because when you see Tigran, the songwriter, how he plays with devotion and leaves the band, then a little bit of his understanding is transferred to me, I felt. The whole performance is suddenly charged with more meaning from which I get something and which I can then bring to my playing. But then I had to interrupt the process because there was a very intense video shoot and several workshops for which I naturally wanted to prepare well. After that I practiced much more intensely, very specifically, always alternating between watching the performance and practicing with the transcriptions section by section, very slowly, very intensively for several hours every day and build upon that the next day. It was an incredibly good feeling when you practice a lot every day, sleep well and really feel how you get better every day. So in the future, I want to make sure that I can practice this way for several weeks in a row and that no major project interrupt this. So in this phase, I made the greatest progress in a very short time. The final touches came in the fourth phase. In a few places there was still a lack of precision, a few sections I had not yet fully understood, but I knew from experience that it was more important to meet the deadline because otherwise you just get stuck on details that hardly anyone notices. Still, when I was shooting the video, I was dissatisfied that I didn't play the song naturally and relaxed, but just tried to imitate the drumming and in some places just didn't grasp the musical idea. So after the video shoot in the fifth phase, I invested another six hours over several days to really understand the missing parts, to improve inaccuracies that I had got used to and to do justice to the song. Because in some places I just hadn't invested enough time to internalize them and play them really cleanly. But after more than 37 hours spread over about six weeks, I had a recording that I was really happy with. So the most important insight for me was that in the future I shouldn't learn songs too drumistically. That means not just learning the drums by heart, but understanding the song first depending on what the starting point is, be it the, the guitar riff, the bass line, or a general motif that is played by everyone, you should first understand the subject of a song, the theme. What are we actually talking about? What is our point of reference? So try to understand a little how the song developed. Then you play more musically and appropriately. So in a way, I have to do the work that the band did in the rehearsal room. Then I really play the piece and not just the drums. In this case, I only got a feel for the song at the very end. Next time I will start with it. And if I know, for example, that the guitarist wrote the piece, I first try to understand the guitar riffs before I practice the drums to understand why the drummer is playing one way or another. And so hopefully I will play much more informed. Speaking of more informed, that was another important takeaway when trying to learn the song just by watching. I felt that the visual impression distracted me a little from listening, but in a good way. I didn't try to analyze everything convulsively, I just let it sink in. 
Since two sensory channels, seeing and hearing, were active at the same time, I perceived watching as a better informed listening. In order to learn only by watching, I would have to turn off the sound, but then I would really only have learned movements and not played music. The combination made me listen less filtered and that was really good for me. It somehow could sink in deeper. Nevertheless, I then used the sheet music because I noticed that I wouldn't have reached my goal only by watching and I would have had to analyze note by note anyway. Why not take advantage of the fact that someone has done this before? And the third big realization was again something very surprising. Because of the deadline and my dissatisfaction, I was mentally too tense at some point and that also made me play too tense. In the middle of the song there is a part that has almost metal breakdown quality with quite fast groups of three and four strokes on the bass drum. At some point I couldn't play it anymore because I was too tense. One reason for this was that I picked up the pace too early here. I should have practiced the part slowly and cleanly for a much longer time, of course already with a foot technique, which I also play when it is fast. In the original video you can see that his knee only moves once for three hits, so Arthur also uses the molar technique with his feet. I hadn't internalized this sequence of movements well enough at a slow speed, so it got very messy at the fast tempo. The second reason was that the music on the headphones was just too loud. Like someone who has hearing protection on and speaks too loudly and becomes hoarse later. I involuntarily played with too much force to hear myself again and was then too tense. The idea was that I should hear the song well, let it guide me and rely on what I had learned. But that was a mistake because I could trust what I had learned and that ultimately includes the song structure. So I didn't have to hear everything to play the song well, otherwise I would have just played along. So I turned down the music uh, a lot in my in-ears, could hear me better and therefore played more relaxed, less, less strenuous, also less loud, which is in this case also more appropriate for the song. And since I heard more of my playing, I felt more in control and really played the song. So, like in the other parts, I come to the conclusion that this method would certainly have worked well with a simpler song, but with such a difficult piece, you need a good mix of methods. Active watching, especially with live recordings where you can observe the interaction, is a very good addition to internalize the musical idea better and could help to grasp a simple short song as a whole, but it's not enough to learn such a complex piece. So the numbers in the statistics say even less about the method this time because I had to adjust it. I also learned that I have to be a little more patient and practice slowly before I pick up the tempo to be really sure that I am playing everything correctly. That also ensures that I automate it and play it better by heart so that more mental capacity is free for other things because the cognitive load was still far too high here. I still had to keep way too much in mind to be able to play really musically. That also led to the fact that I was too tense. So invest even more time, repeat slowly, more often, even if I already have the feeling that I can play it well. Because in order to play musically and in a relaxed way, it has to be absolutely reliable. Last but not least, we always need a bit of headroom to buffer when the excitement comes along, when the cameras are rolling or when we have slept badly or when we need to do 12 or 15 takes. And if we are always at the limit and immediately increase the tempo, even if we are still a little insecure, then we also practice this insecurity. So you should practice one thing until you feel really comfortable with it and then take this feeling with you to the higher tempo. And I will plan better in the future and only start a new cover when I'm sure I don't have any plans in the coming weeks that will interrupt my learning process for more than a day. You can, if you want to, continue to follow in this series whether and how I succeed. Because the next cover is actually already in the works. The drummer on this recording is my biggest influence when it comes to creative and musical rock drumming. Write your tip about who it is in the comments.
In order not to miss the video, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you liked it, please give the video a thumbs up so that YouTube suggest it, uh, would suggest it to more people. And if you also want to support me and help so that this channel can continue to exist, then please check the description under this video. There you will find a link to my Patreon where you can support me with very small donations and get something back from me in return. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you in the next video as always every Thursday at 6 p.m. CET. Until then, take care and goodbye.